pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity that we have tonight to share your word. We are asking, Holy Spirit, that every one of us here will receive from you, Lord. Will receive from you what you have called us to do and to become. Thank you for your mighty blessing. I pray for everyone. Lift your hands for a moment. Jesus, touch our lives. Touch the life of everyone that is here. Especially, Lord, I pray for the young people. Lord, that you will call and commission and send and use and raise people. People to work for you. People to serve you. Thank you for your blessing for this great church. Thank you for the blessing for evangelist Jonathan, Lord. Thank you for the oil, the river that is flowing here. Bless, I pray. Lord, in this moment, I thank you for the breaking through of your mighty Holy Spirit into every life. Lord, we know our days are numbered. Our days are numbered. And so, Lord, we pray that our days will be beautiful before you. We'll use them the way you want us to use them. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Wow. Wow, it's a blessing to be back here again. And I want to thank Evangelist for a great opportunity to be with you and to share a few moments with you. Amen. All right. Um, I believe God is moving in this church and God is doing great things. I believe Pastor Rodney Howard Brown was here yesterday. I was in Ghana watching and I saw he was right here doing wonders. Amen. So I want to share with you something about the work of the Lord, all right? The work of God. And um, God is working. God is working. Everybody say, God is working. God is working. God is working. God is working. Yes, God is working. God is moving. And God is working through your pastor. Yes, there's a river of oil flowing in his life. And that's how come we are all here. So I want us to realize that working with God is exciting. One time uh, a pastor, friend of mine, came around. He was working with me and he said something. He said, you make the ministry exciting. He said it, it always feels like something exciting is happening and something wonderful. And I believe that serving the Lord is a great thing. Serving the Lord is not boring. All right? Serving the Lord is not boring. It's not, uh, it's not boring at all. It's very exciting and engaging. And it's also very difficult. When Elijah, Elisha asked Elijah for a double portion of the anointing, all right, Elijah said, you have asked a hard thing. It's, it's a hard, it's, it's difficult. And the, the ministry, I'm a medical doctor, and I can say that it is a hundred times more difficult to be a minister of the gospel than to be a medical doctor. And I was, I was, I was, I was good in school and becoming a doctor and all that. It wasn't like I was failing. No, I was at the top. I won prizes. I won awards. Oh, yes. So, but I can tell you the ministry is much more difficult than all that. Yes, to be a pastor, to, 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 to build a church, to build a mega church, is to me the most difficult of all the things in the ministry. 
to make the church grow is the most difficult part of the church work, of all the different things there are, you know, to make a church grow. Uh, it takes many, many, many great moves to make a church grow. And God wants us to build a mega church. Amen. 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 God, God wants us to build a large church. If you were God and you had 7 billion people to save, you wouldn't want a small church. You would want something big. Something that could that would help to save the people. Amen. Amen. So I believe that God wants to engage all of us in his work. And all of us, including the musicians who are going off this off the stage, <laughs> I need you guys. But I need you in, in front here, not at the back. Just join us here, please. I've been a musician before. So I know that ministry very well. Yes. So God wants us to really all get involved in his work. All right? The traditional idea that... You have a pastor that few people are called. You have one pastor who is a great giant and everybody else sits in church, you know, just listen to him for a 30-minute sermon and then go home on Sunday. You get it? It's, it's a very boring version of Christianity. Very, very, very boring indeed. You know? Now, I thank God I got saved. Because if I hadn't been saved, I think I would have been an atheist. And I would have been a terrible one. Yeah, I really thank God that I found Christ. You know? And I was, I was, I was put off more by the church and the way church was. I found it so boring. I found... The hymns and the priests and their sermons so difficult to relate with. Yes. And I uh, mean, I just don't know how I got saved. But I just got saved in time. And if it had continued a little bit longer, honestly, I don't know what would have happened. I would have been the champion hater of churches and pastors. I'd have criticized them and made nonsense of things in the church. But Jesus saved me. Yeah, Jesus saved me when I was a teenager. And uh, I've been a Christian for so many years, serving the Lord and working in the church. Amen. Everybody say, I've been a Christian for so many years, serving the Lord and working in the church. Amen. That should be your testimony. Yes, that I've been a Christian for so many years, serving the Lord and working in the church. So, I believe that uh, God wants us uh, to come into a great work. Let's, let's do something interesting. Something that will engage us. Yes. Something that will engage our hearts. And something that everybody will be involved. Not just Pastor Jonathan, but all of us can be involved in doing a great work. And I know your church has grown since the last time, but it's going to grow even more. Amen. Yeah. Now, in the realm of the spirit, 
In the realm of the spirit. Give me one of your little bottles of water. In the realm of the spirit, I saw your pastor. Uh, I saw him on a mountain. And he was climbing a mountain. I mean this pastor here. He was climbing a mountain. And he was uh, about 70% up the mountain. And he was alone. Now, when you are going higher in God, there are fewer and fewer people with you. Because the narrow way has few people. One of the characteristics and one of the things that make you know you are on the right road is that there are always fewer and fewer people with you. Because broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in. Many. But narrow is the way that leads to life. So I saw him on the mountain and... The Holy Spirit whispered to me that he's climbing a mountain now and that there are not many in that place. And I believe that in America, there are not many at the place where he is now in the realm of the Spirit. You see, I'll tell you, what will take you higher and further Faster than anything is a mountain. <laughs> you realize when you climb a mountain, you're going higher. Yeah. And that's difficult. Yes. So, loneliness will be a portion in the sense there will not be so many like that. But that is the right way. And in America, market, this is an unusual move of the spirit. It's a move. It's like a river, a small river, though. It's like a river in the middle of a desert. Yes. Because America is becoming like a desert in the realm of the spirit. It used to be big trees and forests and lots of growth. But it's becoming desertified if that's the right word. So this is a river in the middle of the dryness that is overwhelming. It's the same dryness that overwhelmed Europe that most of the churches are empty and sold. So the word I have to you is to keep climbing. Keep climbing, even though there's not many around, around where you are. You are, you are actually going up the mountain. You are actually going to the top. Yes, you are actually going to the top. So keep climbing. 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 That's the right mountain. And you see, this is the mountain that God has placed before us. The mountain of his work. The mountain of his work. I want you to turn with me to Isaiah. At least we shall read some verses. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah chapter number 2. And it shall come to pass. Are you with me? It shall come to pass. So this is a prophetic word. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Amen. This is a prophecy of the Lord's house. The house of the Lord. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Because 
The Lord's house is a mountain. God's house is a mountain. It's something great and awesome when you see it. I've been in mountains. Well, not so many, but I've been in Swiss mountains. And the French Alps. And honestly, mountains are awesome. When you see the mountains, I remember one time I was going up to Mont Blanc. Do you know Mont Blanc? The highest mountain in Europe. You know, they have this Mont Blanc pens and Mont Blanc, whatever. It's actually a mountain. The white mountain, that's what it means. The mountain that is white all the time. Blanc is the blank, is white. Mountain. Mont is mountain. The white mountain. French. And at different points, as we were climbing up the mountain, there were plaques. And there were plaques of who came to this point first. Uh, mountains are awesome. So many people die there all the time. I don't even know why they climb these mountains. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. But it's like at each point, there was who came here first and in which year. And it's awesome. Now, apart from the mountains, there's, there's always the big mountain which stands out above all others. And the Bible says that in the last days, the house of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established in the top of the mountains. It will be the biggest mountain. It will be the biggest mountain, the best mountain. It's the biggest mountain and the best mountain. It's going to be the house of the Lord. Yes. And you see, this is a prophecy. Since I started the church, and I've been in the church work, the church has become established in the top of the mountains more than any other thing. I've seen banks close down. Airlines disappear. At least in my lifetime, I don't know about your lifetime, but I've seen insurance companies close down, banks, investment, whatever, disappear. Panam used to be an American, and those of you who are old enough, to know, all these have vanished, but the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so this church has a prophecy that the mountain of the Lord's house will be established as the major mountain. The major mountain. The big mountain. The big thing that God will do. No one can close down the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church no matter what happens in this world. Yes. So I want to tell you, you know, many years ago, my pastor in England who ordained me to the ministry, he said something. He said, during the dark ages, the church closed down virtually and the only people left in churches were the monasteries. So the church was actually finished. It was just the monks in little castles. That was all that was left of the church. But Jesus maintained his word. I will build my church. 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 And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I will build it. All through the dark ages, when the church was shrunken into a little, little group, he kept maintaining his word. And I want to say for America, all through whatever is happening and whatever seems to be going on or whatever, Jesus stretches out his hand towards the church and says, I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. It's a prophecy. Isaiah chapter 2. And it says, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And shall be exalted above the hills. Wow. 
the church is going to be the greatest thing on this earth. The church. So you better line up with the church. I will build my church. This is the word of the Lord to us. It shall be exalted above the hills. And what's going to happen? All nations shall flow into it. Look at the scripture, please. All nations shall flow. Now, one of the characteristics of the church, all right, is all nations. All nations. You see, anyone who is not prepared to be international cannot be part of the last day move of God. Yes, because all nations are going to flow to it. All nations. It's not an English thing. It's not an American thing. It's not a Chinese thing. It's an all nations thing. All nations. So, we have to get rid of all tendencies to be inward looking and all tendencies to be very nationalistic for your nation. You see, real ministry is in four phases. Always. I can prove that to you from the Bible, but we don't have time. But at least Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth is four phases. So your ministry and your life has four phases. Yeah. And notice that to go from Jerusalem, you go to Judea, which is outside the home of Jerusalem. And then you go to Samaria, and Samarians were people that Jews did not like. In fact, at one point, they were insulting Jesus. And they said to him, Say we not that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil. This was an insult to Jesus. Didn't we say that you are a Samaritan? It was an insult to be a Samaritan. But Jesus said, you shall receive power and you shall be my witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So the nations of the world are very much a part of the mighty mega church. And I want to say that anyone who is to flow into the greatness of what God has, has to shed his snake skin and take on other skins comfortably. Otherwise, I tell you, you are never really going to see the real mega ministry that God has for your life. How many of you have heard of Reinhard Bonke? Yeah. You know, I had a privilege of meeting him a few times. But the last time I had with him, he pulled a chair and sat with me down. He sat down with me, just the two of us, and made his assistant move away. So it was just the two of us. And he told me a number of things. I'm sure he knew that this was the last time because he wasn't well. And then he asked me, do you know Mr. So-and-so? He asked me, do you know Mr. So-and-so? I said, I do. And this man was not German and was not American, but was an African. And he said to me, this is what Bonke said to me. He said, that's the secret of the ministry. This man. Yeah. 
That's the secret. That man had been with him for many years. Yeah. And it's true. If you know his ministry and what he does, because I know the man, I know the man well, that man is actually the secret of the ministry, behind the ministry. Yeah. And it's because Bonke was able to assimilate such a person. Yes. And take such a person into his life as a major part of his ministry that he was able to do that. I mean, that's what he told me. He just told me, you know this man? That's the secret. Yeah, that's what he told me. And before he died, this is what somebody told me. He only mentioned one person to his wife. Say thank you to this man. Yes. Said, say thank you to this man. So, brothers and sisters, I really do believe that ministry and building what God's will is. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 2, verse one, verse 1 again. Verse 1 and verse 2. Yes. Now, verse 3. Verse 3. Many people shall come. This is the prophecy. Many people will come. Now, honestly, many people, this is not, this is not the end. Many people are going to come. Yes. Many people will come and say. And they're going to say, look at what they're going to say. Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. God will teach us his ways. Let's go to the church. Let's go to church. Let's go to the house of the Lord. He will teach us his ways. And we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion, and Zion always represents the church. Yes, always represents the church. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So this is a great and marvelous prophecy. For all of us to know that. Let's put our bets on the church. <laughs> Yes. Let's, let's put our support on the church. Let's build the church. Let's, let's do what prophetically has been promised. That in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. That's what's going to work. The church will work and the church will stay. Even after our crusades are gone and our breakfast meetings are gone and our singing groups are gone and our worship bands are gone, the church will be there. And truly it is the church that has remained even up until today. Since the church came to this island, it has continued to prevail because this is the prophetic will of God. No matter what happens. And that is why Satan is against the church and try to shut down the church by especially attacking its leaders and its pastors. So I want us to have a great support for the church because there is a great prophecy for the church. How many want to be part of this great prophetic? So you see, when I saw your pastor, it was this morning, I saw it in a vision that he was climbing a mountain. I saw it. That's the mountain of the Lord's house. It's, it's a big mountain. I'm telling you, I've been doing this for some years. It's very difficult to build a church. It's, it's a burden. Paul said it's a burden that comes on me. But it's a burden that we must all get involved with. And God is going to bless us as we do that. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet for a moment. Thank you, Father. I want everybody to lift your hand and surrender yourself to Jesus for his work, for the work of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for calling us 
to build your church. I surrender all to Jesus. I give myself to the building of your church. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the house of the Lord. Everyone just praying in a moment. Matola Ramando Shatanda Lebekebara. Palende Rebeketamanda Lababa. Pe Katambalo Made Baramanda Lababa. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Matagala Boshindele Pandalama Tarabandole Kabarada. Yambo Sentele Mandala Mambalaba Katazandale. Fele Taramando Shandalaba. I believe, Lord, in the prophecy. I believe. The prophecy you believe is the prophecy that is going to come to pass. The house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated in a moment. All right. Now, actually, we are praying. What I'm sharing with you is something that we are all praying is going to come to pass. Amen. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse number 21. Zechariah chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 21. And what does it say? And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Amen? Are you listening? Are you part of this service? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. Amen. The next verse, verse 22. Yes, this is a prophecy. Many people, many peoples, many peoples, and strong nations, strong nations. Is America a strong nation? Is, oh, is America a strong nation or? It's a strong nation. I hear it's the strongest so far. <laughs> oh, yes. Many peoples. Everybody say many peoples. many peoples. Yeah, you see, different groups of people. Yes. You see, the so-called racist uh, or different countries and nationalities and colors and all that, it's rather going to be taken advantage of in the church. We are rather going to take advantage of that. And the whole church is going to be mixed up. You get what I'm saying? Like a kind of a spaghetti mixed with so many things. Yes. Many peoples. People. There are types of people. And strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. How many want to be part of this amazing prophecy that many peoples, many peoples, Groups of people, different kinds of people. Yes. Yes. This is going to be the portion. And I want to implant into your heart the heart for other peoples. Yes. When that happens to you, right, you are suddenly opened up to the work of the Lord. Because many times, you see, you would wonder why go from Jerusalem to Judea when there are still sinners in Jerusalem? I mean, you ask yourself, why go outside America when there are still a whole lot of sinners in America? But you see, it's a spiritual law. If you stay in one place, you never accomplish your full ministry. Your ministry has to keep moving. Because you see, what happens is that, like immunity, you see, initially, when certain things come into you, like... Um, your body reacts to foreign invasions. What we call allergies. You see, you may go somewhere and your body 
receives the allergen or what stirs up the allergy. But nothing will happen to you for the first time. Then the body will start developing a memory and start building defenses against that thing that came. I remember years ago, I went to my mother's, my grandmother, to visit my grandmother in Switzerland. Nothing happened to me. I stayed there for some time. Then I remember going again and I developed serious allergies. So I was, my problem was, that why is it that the first time nothing happened? You see, when I grew up and I understood medicine, I understood why nothing happened the first time. Because the first time, you go freely, they were not expecting you. <laughs> they were not expecting you. They didn't know who you were. So you preach freely and the word of God worked. But when you come later on, the whole system has developed defenses and allergies against you. Yes, they know you. That's why you should have gone to Jerusalem, to Judea. Yes, where nobody knows you yet. But by the time you finish in Judea, the allergy, the allergic response has developed. And then by that time, you are in Samaria. Hallelujah! And then when the allergies are even more developed in Samaria, Samarit Sam Samaritarian allergies. By that time, you'll be at the ends of the world, preaching the gospel to the end. Hallelujah! That's why we keep moving. Well, that's why we are supposed to keep moving. If you stay in one place and you notice that the American ministries that stayed only in America fizzled out and died out. Because initially, the world was shocked and blessed to have people like Kenneth Hagin and T.L. Osborne and uh, all the great men America has been like a, 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 a nest producing great things, great men. But after a while, the whole country developed negativities and allergies, allergic responses to them. And the hatred multiplied. Ah, you should have seen the hatred in the 1980s for television evangelists. Yeah, until they wipe them all out. Yeah. And replace them with other, other things. So God's formula is many peoples. Many peoples. So my prayer for you is that, you know, and for me, I always want to see other nationalities around me. Yes, I always feel. You know, it's one of the blessings of Israel. That strangers will feed your flocks. In Isaiah, strangers will feed your flocks. Different nationalities. You should be proud of it. You should be able to say, oh, this one is from this country. This one is from this country. This one is from here. This one is from here. All these guys are around me. I have a family of international children. Many peoples. Can I have my scripture again? Many peoples. Yes. Many peoples and strong nations, strong and big nations. Earlier this year, I appointed my first Chinese pastor. Yes, pure Chinese. Oh, I was so happy. I said, Man, let me do this thing. <laughs> oh, yes, Chinese. China is a strong country, you know. China is 1.5 billion people. I mean, that's a strong country. Just the people alone is strong. Yeah. So, many, many, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. May you be part of these strong nations. And so, this church is going to have strong nations and you must not not just to put the flags up there Do you have flags not, not just to put the flags of people there just to say all these nationalities are there but it's like the people are actually assimilated genuinely as part of the family 
That's, that's that, that, where you realize that you are comfortable with every nationality. Not every nationality is that easy to be comfortable with, but you have to develop it. Yes, you have to be developed. You have to develop it. You see, even music and movies, some movies are international. And some movies are very, very American. If you are outside America, you can't understand the movie. You can't understand from the language. You can't understand from the examples. You can't understand the movie from the things that are happening because it's deeply American. Just like if somebody was to make a movie from another country, it would be deeply from that country. But there are some movies that are, they seem to be international. They seem to understand many other cultures. And many other aspects. Yes. And that's how the church is. The church is like a movie too. It's, like, it's not just that we, we, we are putting out uh, uh, one, one type of person or to give a face or a front. But genuinely. You know, like the guy that uh, Pastor uh, Rainer Bonke said to me. He said, do you know Mr. So-and-so? I said, yes, I know him. He said, that's the secret. This was his last words to me. That's the secret. That's the secret. And this man has been an in internal and integral part of his ministry all through the years, as far as, as long as I've ever known him it wasn't just a face yeah and so many things depend on him up to, even up to today so you see when you see the nations there you see many people switch off their minds and say oh that's Africa you see, the, the way the ministry is now and the way the church is, there is no part of the world which doesn't really concern you. Yes. A -a Everything everywhere concerns you. Many people don't know that even Ukraine was the most Christian of the Eastern countries. It's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the Christian nation of the East. That's what that is happening there. That's a Christian nation. The churches in Ukraine... The pastors, many, my books were first translated into Russian in Ukraine. Yes, I've been preaching many Ukrainian churches. And it's amazing what God was doing and has done in Ukraine. That today, none of us can go there for a visit. So everything everywhere in the world has, has to start concerning you. The evangelism that is being done there concerns you. It's a time for internationalization of ministry and acceptance of whom God uses. And if you don't do that, you're going to be cut out of the real move of God. Yeah. You see, God blessed me with an American. That's Kenneth Hagin. Suppose I said, oh, I, I don't want Americans. Suppose I said, I, I, don't, I don't want white people. That means I'm cut out from Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin is from Tulsa. Many people could not understand when he preaches, but I, I could understand. I could listen to him for hours. I learned all his family members. I knew his aunties, his uncles, everybody. I knew them. I knew his family. It was my family too. His brother, his brother was a boxer. I knew all the bad things that happened in his family. Yeah, I bent my head over. To listen. One day I was in my room listening to Kenneth Hagin. He was speaking in tongues. My wife came into the room and she made a comment. She said, you and this man. And I was thankful that it was not a woman. It was like, you and this man. <laughs> oh, yes. I said, oh, yes. Yes. Then God blessed me with a Korean. Yes, Yonggi Cho. Yeah. God blessed me with a Korean. I said, uh, this Korean. And uh, the Lord said, you want to learn about church growth? And I wanted to learn about church growth. I sat on a plane and I flew to Korea. One of the most important journeys of my life. I tried to get near to Yonggi Cho. And I couldn't. I flew to a place called Yverdon in Switzerland. Tried to get close to Yonggi Cho. I couldn't even see him. I decided to become friends with his assistant. 
Hey. Luke 16, 16 says, every man presseth into it. Every man does what? Presseth into it. He said, the law and the prophets were until John. But since then, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man presseth. You have to press in. So when I realized the door was blocked for me to know Yongicho, I decided to press in. And who was it? A Korean who could hardly speak English. I learned to understand Yongicho's English. Korean English. And I think the way the Korean language is very difficult to speak English. If you learn Korean, I think it's difficult to change to English. Because of the way the language is. Then I found myself in Korea. They were serving me their traditional food, kimchi. I said, hey, what is this? <laughs> and I kept going to, I've been going to Korea for more than 25 years. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you are going to have, I'm telling you something. If you are going to see the grace of God and the power of God, you, one of the things is you have to accept many peoples and strong nations and other nations. They, they, that's the ministry today. Yes, that's the reality. And then God gave me, I don't know what Benny Hinn is, Palestinian, Arab, Canadian, American, I don't know who he is. <laughs> hey! So now I was in the Middle East. Yes! And I have to open myself. And the Lord said to me, I said, Lord, I want to have miracles in my ministry. I don't have no miracles. I'm just a teaching with computer uh, PowerPoint. God has not called us with PowerPoint. And PowerPoint shall follow science. No, no, no. Science and wonders. Science and wonders. And miracles. Yes. So I said, no, Lord. How can I have that? He said, Lord said, listen to Benny Hinn. I said, Lord, I don't understand when Benny Hinn preaches. Because Benny Hinn usually quotes from Job and from Leviticus, Isaiah, and I don't understand why he never quotes from Corinthians or John or Matthew. Never. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> so I had to subject myself to Benny Hinn. When I pray, I put him on. I said, you preach. They said I should listen to you. So preach in, <laughs> preach in the video. For about 10 years, I was just listening to him preach. I didn't understand all that he was preaching. Oh, yes. Then one day, one day. Huh? Are you listening to me? I said one day. I was lying on my bed. And Benny Hinn was on the video. I put him to work. He was preaching. <laughs> and then he said something. And I began to understand. He was preaching about steps to the anointing. Yes, yeah, steps to the anointing. And then suddenly I understood. You see, I began, that was the beginning of understanding him. Yes, you see, and the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of understanding, Isaiah 11, 2. A spirit of understanding. So when you begin to understand somebody, it, it's a sign that the spirit that is upon the person, is be, uh, or the spirit of understanding, is beginning to come into you. That's why you understand. That's why you understand. That's how come you understand. Because the anointing of the spirit of the Lord is coming into you. But until then, you'll be listening and the person always sounds like, what's he saying? Why, why, why are people happy? Why, why do people understand? I don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> because you don't have, you, 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 you are cut off. But when you start to understand, when you start to open yourself and the Lord starts to speak to you, then you see a great change starts to come into your life. So this church, although it's in America, is going to be completely de-Americanized. And it's going to be completely internationalized. It's going to be completely uh, internations. Internations. Many, many, many nations. Many, many, many nations. All nations shall flow into the church. 
Can I have an amen from somebody? Oh, yes. I hope you are still around. Many nations shall come and seek the Lord. The next verse. And in those days it shall come to pass that one man shall take hold out of all the languages. Zechariah 8. I'm on verse 23, I think. In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. We will go with you because we've heard that God is with you. People are going to say, We want to come with you to your church. We want to come to this church. We want, we've heard that God is with you. We hear that God is with you. We hear that God is with you. Put that verse on, please. Zechariah 8. Oh, yeah. That says the Lord. In those days, ten men from every language. You see, different languages. Different languages. Different accents. Mixed up. Mixed up. Everybody say mixed up. Mixed up. What food do you have that is mixed up? Jumbo what? Jambalaya. 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 Jambalaya church. It's going to be a Jambalaya church. Mixed up languages. Mixed up languages. Mixed up languages. Oh yes. And they shall grasp the sleeve of the Jewish man and say, let us go with you. Let us go with you. For we have heard that God is with you. This is what's going to happen in your church practically. I prophesy the whole city will say, we have heard, we have heard, we have heard. I prophesy the whole city. I see people even standing upstairs here. Prophesy that people will say, we want to go with you. We hear that God is here. We hear that God is with you. This is what's going to happen in the church. Yes. Are you excited to be part of something that God is doing? And people are going to say, we want to go with you. 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 We hear that God is with you. We hear that God is with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the portion. That's the portion of everyone whom God has called. Yes. People are going to come and say, we want, we want, we want to be with you. Yeah. We want to be with you. You know, in my church, it's mostly young people. Mostly young people. And I'm telling you, today, today, for young people to come to church, I mean, you ask yourself, there are so many things to do as a young person. Movies to watch, sex to have, drugs to take, smoking to smoke, weed to smoke, everything. We have everything as a young person, full of desires. But then the young people are saying, we want to go to church. We want to go with you. We want to go to church. 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 Because we have heard that God is with you. Oh, yes. And I tell you, it's going to become more supernatural. The church is more supernatural. And if the church doesn't become supernatural, you better watch out. Even the secular world is becoming supernatural. Because they recognize that there is something super or beyond the natural. That's why movies have things that are not natural and supernatural things. They always, these things are part now of the secular world. Because they recognize that there is something else. And that's why the church is going to become more supernatural on Sundays, on Tuesdays, on Fridays, and on every day. It's going to become more unusual and more supernatural. Because we have heard that God is with you. We heard, we heard that God is with you. Paloma da Bakapasonda. The prophecy you believe 
is the prophecy that is going to come to pass. The prophecy of the church, of a great church, a great church. Hallelujah. Prophecy number three. I've given you two prophecies. One in Isaiah, one in Zechariah. Prophecy number three. Isaiah. Isaiah 60, verse 22. I'm talking about the mega church, the rise of the mega church. Isaiah 60, verse 22. Are you watching? Are you believing? Are you watching? Are you believing? Are you watching? Are you believing? Do you believe what you are seeing? That's the Bible. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. It says a little one. A what? I can't hear you. A little one shall become a thousand. Receive a thousand members, a thousand members, a thousand members. A little one shall become a thousand. Nobody knew Pastor Shuttlesworth before. He was a little one, but that prophecy was upon his head. A little one shall become a thousand. It's happening practically. And a small one shall become a strong nation. My God. Wata Malosa Abandolamanda. A small one shall become a nation. Do you receive this grace upon your life? Yes. There is a time where there's. There's nothing to do but just to believe the things that are being said. They said, I'm not giving you what to do. I'm giving you what to believe. Yes, this is what to believe. There's nothing to do but to believe. To believe. And to receive it from heaven. Because if God does not do, no one can do this. A small one will become a thousand. Yes. Lift your hands and say, I'll be numbering things in thousands. Church members in thousands. Souls in thousands. Ministry in thousands. Soul winning in thousands. Crusades in thousands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is the portion of the law. Oh yes. Put on Isaiah 60 and verse 1. 60 and verse 1. Arise. Do you hear the spirit of the Lord saying, Arise, arise, and shine. Oh yes. Why should you arise and shine? For your light has come. Now what is light? Light is the word. Light is revelation. Light is revelation. Light is the word. When God gives you a word, it means light has come. Get up and start shining. Did you hear me? I said, get up and start shining. Because a light has come. Oh, yes. Many years ago, I was praying in a, in a room somewhere, and the Holy Spirit came on me. I was kneeling down about 2 a.m. in the night, and the Spirit said, from today, you can teach. From today, you can teach. That was a light. It was a light that came to me. And it was get up and start shining. So I got up and I started teaching. And since then I've been teaching. Yes. I don't have any time to do business. I don't do any business at all. I don't do any, any kind of business. Because I've been shining since the word came to me. Yes. I don't, I, I don't have any businesses. Oh, I don't do any business. Profit making business. No. I don't even rent houses. Yeah. <laughs> all, all my only work is this. Just to keep shining, it takes all my life. From that one word that God gave me, from today you can teach. It has filled my, my days. It has filled my life. Yeah. 
And if you will listen to the word that God is saying to you today, it will fill your life with so much to do. You never even have rest till you finally rest in peace. Yes. And it will really be a rest. Yes. May this come to pass in your life. And put on verse 2. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness, the people. Is darkness beginning to cover America? Yes. Yes. Now, it's interesting. But the Lord shall arise over you and his glory will be seen. So this is the time that amazingly there will be a lot of glory also happening at the same time. So this is your time. So the whole world can have so much darkness. And you see Christians upset with what is happening politically this is happening that's a, don't worry it is in that environment that the anointing really works and the church really works so may the lord increase you and may you shine according to the word of the lord yes because in the last days there's going to be wheat and tears wheat and tears and both of them will be mature so the evil will be mature and the good will also be mature. Both are coming at the same time. That's why the Lord said, leave them, let them be, till the time when wickedness is mature, and goodness is also mature. So, Pastor Jonathan, your goodness will be mature, and face the maturity of the wickedness in this world. And the goodness of this church will be mature, and face the maturity of of the wickedness all around you. Are you ready for another prophecy? Oh, yes. Jeremiah chapter 30. I'm prophesying over you. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. And out of them, then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them who make merry. The man in the red shirt. Hello, sir. Can I pray for you, please? Can I pray for you? Please come. Yes. Oh, yes. You can't walk? I can walk. You can walk. You're told not to. Uh, The Lord wants to heal you. And the Lord is giving you a ministry. I see you doing things that you never thought you would do. For him, Amen. for Jesus, yes. There is a there's a grace and there's a gift on your life. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Father, thank you for Kevin. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your healing for his life. Oh yes. What he has not been able to do up till now, and what he didn't achieve, and what he couldn't accomplish. Bless him to accomplish it. Thank you you for your grace and your blessing. In Jesus' name. You know what it means. You know what it means. Be blessed. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Now, this is a prophecy for you. Listen, it says, I will multiply them. I will multiply them. And they shall not diminish. Amazing. (laughs) Do you believe? How many are shocked at the amazing prophecies concerning your life and the mega church? It's amazing. I will multiply them. 
and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Receive it all. Receive it and believe it. This is what's going to happen. Yes. This is it. I will also glorify them and they shall not. So this can never be a small church. This, it can never be a small church. It is a mega church. Say we are a mega church. Lift your hand and say there is no space for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is a mega church. He says I will multiply them. I will multiply them. And they shall not diminish. And I will also glorify. Glorify means beautify. Glory, glory is an old word. We don't use glory. We don't say, oh, hi, lady, you are glorious. No, we say you are nice, you are pretty, you, you know. But if we're speaking in James language, we say, oh, you look glorious today, you know. <laughs> but what we say is you look beautiful, you look nice. So glory is beauty. The church is going to be beautiful. The church is going to be beautiful. The church is going to be beautiful. Oh, yes. A church mixed up of all nations. I will multiply them. I will bless them. They shall not be few. They shall never be small. They shall not be few. In the name of Jesus, from the front to the back, you will come to church and if you don't make an appointment, you will never see your friend because it's, your friend is mixed up at the front or the back and you will never see. You have to make an appointment before. Say, let's meet at this gate. Let's meet at this door at 10.30 or whatever because you won't see the people. There are too many for you to find them. I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I, they shall glorify them. They shall not be small in the name of Jesus. Wow. And you are going to meet people. You are going to meet people and say, Are you still in the church? Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here all the time. So I never see you. So I, I come for the second service. You come for the first service. I come for the fourth service. I come on Saturdays. You come on Sundays. I come on Tuesdays. You come on Fridays. I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. Yes, yes. This is what the Lord is going to do. This is what the Lord is going to do. Kama shomba da sandala babanda. Receive power. Receive power. Power belongs to God. Receive grace. Grace is from the Lord. Receive the grace for the mega church. Receive the grace to build prophetically what God has ordained that you should build right here in Pittsburgh, right here in America, right under the banner of this ministry. In the name of Jesus, lift your hand and thank God for the prophecy of the mountain of the Lord's house, which shall be built in the top of the mountains and all nations shall flow into the church. Oh, my Santo Pacapala Babanda Baba. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Are you ready for more prophecies? Oh yes, Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. Hmm. Pa ma santola mandara bakaba. I will give you pastors. Look at it. Listen, this is what's going to happen. And I see many people here being called to the pastoral ministry. Yes. Look at it. Jeremiah 3, 15. Somebody bring my scripture on the screen. No, no, change to the King James, please. Have you got a change the version, please? King James. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at it. Beautiful. It says, and I will give you pastors. Who will give you pastors? God. God is saying, I'm going to give you pastors. After my own heart. This is what's going to happen now. I will give you pastors according to my heart. Like pastors that I, God, likes. I like them. Pastors that I, I am happy with. I will give you pastors. Not pastors that people say, that's a certificate. But pastors according to my heart are you happy about this wonderful 
I thought you'd be screaming and jumping into the sky when you see, I will give you pastors. I will give you pastors. I will give you pastors. I will give you a real pastors according to my heart. Huh? And what are these pastors going to do? Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Amazing. You see, this is a real pastor. He's going to give you knowledge and understanding. He's going to quote from the Bible and feed you, not with jokes. He says, I will give you pastors who shall feed you with jokes. Some churches have to have a joke every Sunday. A joke to start and a joke at the end. I don't know. And you have to quote from Encyclopedia Britannica for every sermon. No! No! I will give you pastors according to my heart. Huh? Which shall feed you with jokes. No, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Wow. You know, recently a pastor called me from America. He has a huge church. And he really really wants me to come to his church. You know, he said, you know, I was watching you in Argentina. He said, I watched the whole program you were preaching. And he said, I really, I really want you to come. Then he said something. He said, I noticed that you, you know, you preach from the Bible. Like you, you preach from the Bible. No, so when he said that, I, I wasn't sure what I, whether I was understanding. Like I was wondering what will I, what else will I preach from? He said, I noticed that you, you are staying with the Bible, with the word. Yes. And I was wondering, so what are people preaching today? Yes. He shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. All of you who are going to become pastors, don't be worried. Listen, there was this great man of God who was preaching, and then he was preaching, whatever, then suddenly... He, he, somebody walked up to the pulpit and put a note on the pulpit. You know how it is when you are preaching over time and they want to tell you, please round up and close the service. So this guy walked up and with a note. All right? And when he opened the note, there was a scripture. He said, we said, we would see Jesus. You know when the people came and said, we want to see Jesus. He said, we, we want to see Jesus. And the pastor was shaken. He said, God rebuked him. He said, what are you preaching? What are you talking? What are you saying? What are you doing in this pulpit? What are you doing? What ve- Why have you shifted from what the Bible says? Ah, we came to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. And we want to see Jesus in the church. We want to hear Jesus' words in the church. Jesus is our savior. The savior of the world. Yes. Ah, the same came. This man should see me after church. Well done. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, and decided saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Underline, we would see Jesus, if you can underline it. Underline, we want to see Jesus. In the church, we want to see Jesus, not you. We, We don't want to see you. Uh, your funny little jokes and we want just Jesus. People want Jesus. That was Billy Graham. I heard somebody saying something derogatory about Billy Graham. You know, those whole Billy Graham style type of crusades and just always about Jesus. You have to be born again. And so I said, that is what we've thrown out and look at how the church has become. We need Billy Graham style evangelism with Billy Graham style scriptures and preaching about God and about Jesus. We need it more than ever before. That's what made America great, if you don't know. We would see Jesus. Yes. Now, back to Jeremiah 3, verse 15. I want you to see what's going to happen. Look at this verse, everybody. I will give you pastors according to my, pastors whom I like. Who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding? What's going to happen in verse 16? Look at verse 16. And it shall come to pass. 
You see, after you've had all these pastors after my own heart, it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land. Multiplied and increased in the land, says the Lord in those days. They shall no more say the ark of the covenant of the Lord and all that. But what happens as a result of pastors feeding with knowledge and understanding is what? It shall come to pass that you be multiplied and increased in the land. When you have pastors who feed you with knowledge and understanding. How many of us here, listen, how many of us here believe that God wants to raise up pastors? Pastors after his own heart. Oh yes, I believe it. What does Matthew 22 and verse 14 say? Matthew 22 and verse 14. What does it say? Few are called. Just a few are called. One or two are called. Perhaps somebody will be called. What does it say? Many are called. Many. There are many people here. You are all called to be pastors. And I want to challenge you. Not pastors of your own different churches. Don't have an independent spirit. Pastors of this same church. All of us working together. In the same vineyard. You see, how many want to climb a mountain? Because I believe today, we have all been inspired to climb mountains. I don't know if you have a high mountain in America, but mountains. Now, one of the things is, to climb Mount Everest, one, for one, one person to climb Mount Everest, you need about 270 people to help him. Yes. To carry bags, oxygen, equipment, food, and all that. For one single person to climb the mountain. So for one pastor to build a mega church, we are going to need at least 270 people for this mountain work. We need about 270 pastors. It's true. Because that's mountain climbing. And I saw him in the spirit climbing a mountain. So we need a number of people who are not, not pastors of your own uh, independent charismatic church, Church of Jesus Christ of uh, Pittsburgh, or Pittsburgh National Ministry, or Pittsburgh International Chapel, or Pittsburgh Work of God International, or Pittsburgh Christian Center. No! I'm talking about this church, all of us, all right, in one church, being able to stay together and become pastors and every one of us be pastors of different groups which are all part of the same family yes that is what is going to make a huge and a mighty mega ministry that's what's going to make us into thousands where we are going to have to say please you can't come in now you have to wait for the service and then we you stand outside then the others come out then you also come in for your turn it's going to happen practically I said it's going to happen practically. It's going to happen practically because many are called. Many are called. Many are called to be pastors. Many are called to be leaders. Many are called to help Pastor Jonathan. Evangelist Shuttlesworth. Many, 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 many. Not one. Not two. Many. Many. And today, I want to give you a special look at Matthew 22 look at it verse 14 beautiful verse many many are called yes many are called and once your heart is open to the nations many 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 who are called God is going to use you God is going to use you yes God is going to use you he's going to bless you and send you to every nation because America is full of nations and we are going to be all mixed up together and it's going to be a big family yes and it shall come to pass I will multiply them 
and they shall not be few. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. I prophesy over this church. Ada Osumanangara. Listen, prophecy is, has two effects. One, it predicts, and number two, it causes things to happen. That's why wicked people don't like prophecies. Yes, because it makes things happen. Because God said, what are these bones? He said, do you see? They said, prophesy to the bones. Prophesy to the bones means speak to the bones so that the bones will respond. So I am prophesying over this church. I'm speaking over the church. It's not just a prediction, but I'm speaking into the ministry. And I'm saying that God is raising up this ministry to be a mega, mega ministry in this nation. Every standing, please. Every standing. Oh, yes. Now, you know, this is a time of ministry. Are you listening? This is a time of ministry. Second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 3. It says, now for a long time, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest, a priest who teaches, and without law. America has been without teaching priests, and this church is going to be give rise to many teaching priests. Teaching priests. Pastors who teach. Amen. Teaching priests. And what happened when they teach? Verse 4. Beautiful. But when they, in their trouble, did turn to the Lord God and sought him, he was found of them. And verse 5. And in those times, there was no peace to them that went out, not them that came in. But great vexations were on all the inhabitants of the country. Because there was no teaching priest. Yes. There was no teaching priest. Look at, look at, look at verse 3 again. It says, in, in verse 3 again. Now, for a long season, a long season, Israel had been without a teaching priest. Like people who can stand and teach. Yeah, people who can stand and teach. Not miracles, teaching. People who can stand, they are priests, they care for the people, they offer sacrifices, they pray for the people, and they teach. And because there was no teaching priest, the people were with so many vexations. Many demons affected people. And I see today there's going to be a rise of teaching priests. A rise of teaching priests. A rise of pastors. Now, those of you who are musicians, I want you to know that your ministry as musicians is right on the way to being teaching priests. Yes. I play all the instruments you are playing, personally. I play every one of them. Yes. But I'm telling you that there's something higher. There's something higher. Being a teaching priest. Yes. It doesn't mean you don't play instruments. It doesn't mean you don't do music. Many pastors are, are musicians. But there's something higher. And I believe that many of us here are receiving a call from the Lord today to become teaching priests and pastors. Many. Not few. Many. So if you are here today, uh, let's, let's bow down our heads for a moment. If you are here today, we want to give your life to Jesus. Maybe somebody invited you here, but you are not born again. Just because it's very important to be born again. I want to pray with you. Amen. I want to pray with you. And if you are here like that, 
Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. Oh, yes. I want to take Jesus as my Savior. Wherever you are standing, that is a great blessing. Lift up your hand if you want to give your life to God today. You want me to pray with you. God bless you. Jesus, save my life. I want Jesus to change me and save me today. If you are here like that, lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. You want to give your life to Christ. God bless you. I see your hand. I see, I see some more hands over there. Pastor, pray with me. I need God. I need Jesus. This is the greatest miracle that can happen to you. If you've lifted your hand, just come to me in the front. Come from wherever you're standing. I want to pray with you. Now, come all the way, my dear. I want to pray with you. Come to God. Come to Jesus. God bless you. Stand right here. I want to pray with you. There's one more person. There's one more person. Maybe you are wondering, but I want to just pray with you to give your life to God. You are here. One more person. Come. Come. I want to pray with you. Give your life to God. Give your life to Jesus. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Let's all lift our hands. Say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I, I give my life to you. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I ask you to wash me. I ask you to cleanse me from all my sins. Please write my name in the book of life. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. I can't, let's all say, I give my life to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Where do they go? This way, please. Please go with our pastor. Now, if you are here and you believe God has called you to the ministry, all right? Um, that's, you are a member of this church and you believe you, want, you believe that you are one of the many who are called I want to really pray with you because that is the gift of God that he has given to me yes so I know maybe you may be just an ordinary person around but you feel that you know you would like to become one of the teaching priests one of the servants of the Lord who are also going to join. Like I said, you need 270 people to climb them, make one person climb the mountain. So many people have to help. So if you are here today, you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I believe God has called me and I want to join the force. I want to become a pastor and minister right here and God should help me to serve him. If you are here like that, lift up your hand and then also come to me in the front. Come, come all the way to me. I want to pray with you right here. God bless you. Just come. You don't, listen, don't think you are too young. No, there's nothing like too young and there's nothing like too old. I need, I need to pray with you. Come. You believe. come all the way many are called I'm talking about members of this church members of this church that is my calling to challenge people to work for God and I'm, I'm so proud of seeing all this all of you here I'm proud of you thankful to God Pastor Jonathan all these people are volunteering themselves uh, they are saying we want to be one of the pastors in this mega church each one of them represents a hundred people and 
more. Yes. What a blessing. This church is changing and it's becoming more like an army. How many know that 10,000 little children, what can 10,000 little children do versus 10 armed men, grown-ups? So many of the churches are filled with little, little children who can do nothing. But this church is going to be filled with men who are armed for Jesus and who are going to do great things for the Lord. So now, I want to pray for you. Listen, the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, lay hands on the people. Touch them. Touch them. So I just want to touch you. And I believe that when I touch you and I pray for you, God's power is going to come into your life and it's going to make you an amazing minister for Jesus. Yes. No matter the work you do, yes, this is not about money and it's not about receiving a salary. It's about saying, here I am. Send me. Not send them. Send me. Lift your hands to Jesus. Do you have oil? Do you have oil? Do you use oil in this church? Yes. Oh, yes. Lift your hand. Give me some oil on my hand. All right. Father, thank you for these ones. Now, the Holy Spirit himself is touching you already. Many people are being touched by God. Receive it. Let's sing a song. I don't know, music people. Something that we all know. I want to be more like you, Jesus. I want to be, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be a vessel. Thanks. 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 Wanna be more like Bless. Jesus. Jesus. Receive the gift of God. Receive the gift of God. Everyone here, lift up your hands. Give me some oil. Sing whatever song you want. Sing any song. Change, sing what you want. Father, thank you for this young man. He's called. This man is called by the Lord. I expect oh, yes. a miracle today. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. Oh, yes. Nothing is impossible to those who believe and say. Thanks. I believe Thanks. God's word is still saved. Thanks, Jesus. Receive oh, a miracle, a gift from God. A miracle Thanks. today. For with God, nothing is, nothing is impossible. impossible. You never knew it's not possible that God could use you just as you are. Impossible. Receive the grace of God. Receive the gift of God. I see an apostle. I see an apostle. Thank you. How does this thing work? What do you have to do? Wow. Receive the power of God. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Nothing is impossible. Power. To those who believe. Masindo Kalma Shamando Semendele Makabala Dalabala. Thank you, Lord. God's word still sing. Many great things will come out of you. Many great things. 
Many great things will come out of you. Oh, yes. You see, there are people that never thought anything would come out of you. But that says the Lord. Many good things and great things coming out of you. Many thoughts, nothing could come from you. But the stone which the builders reject has been chosen. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Pasandala makabalada. It's flowing. Receive. 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 Many strong. This lady represents a strong nation. I, I, where is she from? It's a strong nation. I see a strong nation. Hawaii. Hawaii. Makabala mashombele sede. Kalambo shembe. Islands. My dear, receive the gift from God. It's flowing. It's flowing. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Now, there's power here. There's power. Receive. Receive. Every grace. I hear the Spirit saying, every grace. Every grace. Listen. Philippians 1 and verse 7. It says that you be partakers of my grace. Every grace that God gave me to still be around as a minister. He's giving it to people. I don't know who you are. But receive it now. Even if you are not standing here, receive. Put your hand on your head, everybody. Something is happening. There's power here. There's power here. Receive the gift of God. Receive the grace of God. Receive the gift of God. Now, bring this lady to me. Can I lift her up? Listen, the Lord is showing me something about you. You've been hurt. You've been hurt. Hurt and hurt and hurt. Bring that lady to me. Any, anyone screaming, falling, bring them to the front. This is what the Lord is saying. You've been hurt. No, no, on the front there. Leave there. I'll come, I'll come there. I'll come there. My God. But you see, the Lord is healing you of the pain and what hurt you many times. The same thing hurt you many times. But the Lord is saying, be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Power. Power belongs to Jesus. Power. Many servants of the Lord are here today. Bless you, my dear. May your children serve the Lord. In Jesus' name. Masato Bandala Makabalandala. Oh, yes. Thanks, Jesus. Oh, yes. There's power. Young man. Young man. Look at this young man. God is going to use this young man. You see, people don't even know how much God is anointing people tonight to serve the Lord. Father, thank you for blessing. Bless this young man. Let people know his name in future as one of your servants. He will not live in his life in obscurity, but he will live his life in the light of the gospel. Receive the grace of God right now in Jesus' name. There's power. Receive the power. Receive grace. You will not cry. You will rejoice. You will not cry. You will rejoice, says the Lord. Paloba Sendele Makabalana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's power here right now. Receive it. Now, I want to pray for those on that side as well. Can everybody lift your hands? Musical people. Musical people. Come. The ladies. One, two, three. Come. Oh, one, two, three, four. Five. Come and join them. You are going to become pastors. All of us who work in the same church. All of us who work in the same church. Lift your hands. I see it's like a fire from heaven. It's coming down like this. Up and down. 
It's coming down, up and down like this. It's coming down, up and down like that. From, from on top of your head. On top of your head. Palagazabala. Palabasadole Bakaba. Power. Look at this baby. Receive. Receive. Thanks. Look at this one. Receive grace. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing grace from heaven. Anoint the children. Anoint the children. Anoint the children. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, yes. Lift your hand, musical people. May the Lord anoint you. Oh, Receive the gift of God. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Power belongs to God. Take it. It's flowing. It's flowing. The gift. Receive grace to be a minister. Oh, yes. Thanks. Thanks a million. Everyone, lift your hand and thank God. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. As the oil comes upon your head. Power. The whole church is changed. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. There's power here. Receive in your belly. Receive in your belly. Receive the gift of God. Patabo Kabalanda. Mama Mashando Bakabalade. Oh yeah, there's power here. There's power here. There's power here. Oh yes. Oh yes. That's the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Flow. Holy Ghost. Palemaba Masombeli Mandele Baba. Great ministries are born. Great ministries are born. Great ministries are born. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Mababa Subala Bekele. Palo Male 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 Baba. Mambola Mandala Mandala Baba. Now, I want this man to come. This one. I want this man to come. This is what the Lord is saying. What you haven't been able to do beginning from now. You haven't been able to do it beginning from now. You'll begin to do it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive. Power. Power. And grace. Children, pastors. You are called. The miracles. Fifteen. Lift your hands. Father, I was sixteen when you called me. I pray you call this one too. And bless him with your gifts. And use him, Lord. For the nations of the world. Let them hear of him. In Jesus' name I pray. Thanks. Thanks. There's power. Power belongs to God. Lift your holy hands. Lift your holy hands. Mata spelli Oh yes. Receive the grace of God. There's power. Thanks. Thanks. Hallelujah. Thanks. Thanks. Hallelujah. Oh yes. There's somebody here who has a prophetic ministry. There's somebody here with a prophetic ministry. God is opening your eyes. God is opening your eyes. Somebody is receiving a prophetic ministry. Receive eyes opening. Eyes opening. Eyes opening. Yes. Live long and serve him. My God. My God. My God. Paloma Shambalaba. Thanks. Thanks for power. Thanks for power. Receive the gift of God. It's flowing. It's flowing into you. I see pastors. I see pastors. Stand up. Let me pray for them again. I see pastors. I see pastors after my own heart. Receive. 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 Obama Shandola Makabalanda Baba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thanks for touching these children. What a
a blessing. Everyone lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many, many people. 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 You'll be used by the Lord. Lord, I love you. You'll be used by the Lord. There's power here. There's power here. From the depth of my heart, Lord, I love you. There's grace here. Jesus. Beautiful gifts. I love you, Lord. Say, Lord, I Thanks. Thanks for your gifts. Thanks for your gifts. I want to pray for this lady again. I want everybody to lift your hand and say thank you to the Lord. This is a great calling. This is a great anointing. Receive the gift of God. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Malama Shambola Mendelebe. Oh, Thank you. Thank you for this young man. Thank you for the power that you give to him right now. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, 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 thanks. Mambos Pelegele Mare Mada. Everybody lift your hand and receive the grace. The grace for the mountain of the Lord's house. 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 Motabaloma Shambonda Leman da Bakaba. Ma 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 ma. Ma 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 ma. Ma 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 ma. Ma 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 ma. The mountain of the Lord's house. 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 The grace for the mountain of the Lord's house. Mambora Misha Mandala Bagola Manda Deliba. Have a Mandala Masomba Bakabala Deliba. Oh, thanks, 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 thanks. Now, you know, I want to pray for some people that are already pastors in this church. You're already a pastor here. Come, I think I can pray for you too. I feel I can pray for you already. You are pastors or ministers here. Just line up here like this. Just line up here, right here. You know, you are helpers of the pastor's dream and the vision. You are helpers. Give me oil. Listen, may you be helpers. May this church become a little one. Isaiah 60 verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand. May thousands come out of you. Thousands come out of you. Thou oh. I bless you with the blessing of a daughter. Domles Paranosh Pelibes Paramandalas. And I cover you with that covering. I bless you and I cover you in the realm of the spirit. I see a covering flowing all over you. Receive from the Lord. Yes. Receive from the Lord. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness, pastors. Faithfulness. Faithful to the end. Blessed is he that shall be faithful to the end. Faithful to the end. Receive the grace. May what Reinhard Bonke said to me, you see this man, is the secret of my ministry. He helped me. May you be the secret of somebody's ministry. Receive it, my dear. Power belongs to God. Take it. There's fire on you. There's fire. I see fire on you. Malakata bara. A faithful man. You, you will be called a faithful man. You will be called a faithful man. You'll be called a faithful man. A faithful man who can find. A faithful man who can find. Receive the grace of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Where are the ashes? 
Asher, stand here, stand here. Those who have been catching people. May somebody catch you when it's your turn. Lift your hands. Power belongs to God. Listen, ashes are next in line to become pastors. May you become anointed as you were. Oloka abalo, shobalaba. There's power here, I tell you. May you become anointed as you work. Ashes are going to become pastors. I'm telling you. Because it's the work of a potter. Therefore, as you have been a potter in the house of the Lord, may the Lord elevate you and give you what you never thought you would have. Receive grace from God. Power belongs to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Finding him, Lord. Finding him. Using him. Oh yes. Ashes. In the realm of the spirit, many are becoming pastors. Ashes. Receive oil. Power. Power. Fire. Fire. No, you can't run around in the house of the Lord without becoming anointed. Receive anointing. As you work in the house, so the Lord anoints you in his house. Receive true riches. Receive true riches. Receive true riches. Receive true riches. Mama Sapa. I see, listen, I see Russians. I see Chinese. I see Africans. I see nations. Lift your hand, everybody. Every nation. They're all here. They're all here. They're all here. God is bringing, it's, it's a multinational something. For all nations shall come. Ashes, lift your hands. Power. God is raising you. God is raising you. I feel power. I see power. Mashagabalo. Take it now. 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 There's fire here. There's power. Receive. Receive. Receive, receive a gift, a gift, a gift, a gift, a gift. For that says the Lord, your service is not in vain. The reward for hard work is more work. Receive more work from the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Does the light of mean that it's time? Come on. Okay. Everyone lift your hand. Let's we are closing, but the Holy Spirit is moving. Father, thank you for tonight. The beginning of an oil and a grace and a power. Father, I pray for everyone here to be baptized with the grace of the mega, the mega church, Lord, the mountain of the Lord's house, established in the top of the mountains. I thank you. I praise you, Lord. I give you thanks. Everybody, put your hand on your belly. I see a river flowing out of you. Receive the grace of God. Receive the gift of God. Receive the gift of God. Out of your belly shall flow a beautiful gift. A beautiful gift. A beautiful gift. A beautiful gift. gift. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful church that you are building. Oh, Mashandala. All these people down here, all being anointed. Receive it now. It's flowing. 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 Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. It's flowing. It's flowing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. You are Father, I pray for Pastor Jonathan, Lord. I thank you. Where's the oil? I see him on that mountain. Thank you. Ah, even though there are not many with him, 
the Holy Spirit shall be with him. So I help him to cross over the top. He shall cross over the top and go over to the other side. Receive that grace and that gift from the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, everybody. Give thanks to the Lord for the fire of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, for the work of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Are you thanking God? You are Oh yes, when the presence of the Lord is here, we don't even know how to end the service. Why not receive another dose of the anointing? 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 Mother, my son, go to the Why not receive another dose? Why not receive another dose? Lift your hand and say, Lord, I might be a second time. Give me a double dose. A double dose of your gift, Lord. Oh, yes, 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 Lord. A double dose, a double dose, a double dose, 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 double dose. Receive two times. Oh, touch, holy hands. Receive a double portion. Oh, boom, bam, 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 bam. Yes, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly. Thank you. Thanks. 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 It's happening. It's happening. And it's beautiful. Oh, yes. Give thanks to the Lord. 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 Mama, Sarama, Sharamada, Paridese. Palama, Palade, Terebe, Shabalada. It shall come to pass. Where's the girl who was screaming here? Where is she? Bring her to me. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Oh, Basando Lamanda, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. Lift your hands. Pastor David. Thank you. Thank you. You're all I want, Jesus. Come on. You're all I need. Mano sendo lo mo che para mandare. Para mando la sende le ma che para do. Para mando la me che para prophetic words that are so real for healings 
Thank you for healing in our lives. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. You're all I want. You are I want. You're all that I need, Jesus. watching online as well the power of God is real God is touching you God is blessing you God is healing you. anyone who is not well you are not well let me just pray for you also now you are not well let me just pray for you especially I want to pray against death in every sentence of, you are not well come come I pray for you I sent my word and I healed your disease I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and I healed your disease I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. Anybody with cancer, I need you just in the front here. Any type of cancer, just if you don't have cancer, don't stand here. Stand on the side, but I, I want to cancer diagnosed. I want to pray for you here. Any type of malignancy. Stand right here. One, two, three, four, five, like here. Or maybe you don't understand. Like you have any chemotherapy, radiotherapy, those type of things. I need you here. Yeah, even if you've had an operation or anything like that. I'm just gonna I wanna I wanna pray for those ones, I pray for everyone generally because we are we are closing now. We we'll continue in the morning. Lift your hands. Where where are the cancer? One, two, only two. Three, four. All right, lift your hands. Father, everyone stretch your hand. Listen. Many things medical science also cannot do. Also, can. when medical science tries, it gets to a point, and medical science says we've done what we can. I want I want us to believe God that 
He's a healing Jesus. Amen. He's a healing Jesus. He's not only a teaching Jesus, but he's a healing Jesus. And he can and he does heal. Father, thank you for healing all these. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for mercy, for mercy, for healing, for mercy, for mercy, and for healing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. A anybody with what is called an autoimmune disease, if you are here, if I've prayed for you, you can go back. If there's anybody here with what is, what, I don't know if you know what that is, an autoimmune, like SLE, and um, such arthritis that doesn't go, come. I, I need to pray for you. If I've laid hands on you, you can go back. If I've laid hands on you. I want those people to come. Huh? Autoimmune disease on your eye. All right. Lift your hand. God is healing you. God is healing. If you have what is called an autoimmune disease, what's wrong with you? MS, multiple sclerosis, come. Every demonic power is broken. In Jesus' name. You walk again free. What, what's wrong with you? MS. You, you went, it went away, but it's come back. How many years ago? 2018. Jesus. How many believe that God can heal MS? MS. Look at this young man. How old are you, my dear? I'm 31. 31 years old. Lift your hand. Satan, you are finished. <laughs> you are finished. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed of your eye. In the name of Jesus. Everyone, listen. If you are part of this world, one day you need a miracle. Receive a miracle now. Thank you for our sister. Every skin disease goes now. Satan, you are finished. You are finished. In Jesus' name, receive healing. Satan, we are not afraid of you. We reject you. We resist. The Bible says resist the devil. That means resist the sickness. Resist it. Receive healing. Healing. Kalasata Vashada. Every scent of death and representation of death, whatever represents death, be healed of it right now. In Jesus' name. Where is the autoimmune? Autoimmune. Do you have an autoimmune? What, what is this? Lift your hand, lift your hand. It's gone. It is gone. It is gone. Satan, you are finished. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Faith will deal with every impossible situation. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. For your child? Yes. Autoimmune disease? All right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed. I see a woman bleeding. There's a woman bleeding. You have bleeding uh, problem. Bleeding. Come to me. I see a woman bleeding, please. If it is a disease, I don't mean your normal bleeding, but it's a, it's a problem. It's a, there's a problem. Come. This is your time. Receive your healing. No, no, no. Stand here. Stand here. Palamashubala. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed of every abnormality. I see somebody, you can't have a child. Who are you? Come. I want, here, come. Stand here. You can't have a child. Here. Stand here. God will give you a child. Do you believe it? Don't cry. Believe it. Come here. If you are here like that, you want me to pray for you. Come. Jesus, you are all powerful. Remember your daughter. What's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Oh. Thank you. Remember Rebecca, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray for your healing. 
and your deliverance. Every form of barrenness, whatever the cause, I pray against that now in Jesus' name. Tears shall no more flow. There shall be joy instead of tears. One year from today, may your testimony be beautiful. One year from today, in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you part of the children, people? You, yes. What are you doing here? No, what is wrong with you? You say you are not well. Fibroids. So, bleeding. It's bleeding. Okay, lift your hands. Bleeding is ending. And also, visiting of the hospital. You've been going to the hospital a lot. Yeah. There. You've been going to the hospital a lot. I, I went I went to Somebody hold it. And somebody's been going to the hospital a lot. Is your mother? My mom was in the hospital. Yes. Is your mother here? Yeah, she's right now. So you've been going to the hospital because of your mom? Well, I yeah, I had to leave Pennsylvania and go to Nebraska because she had a stroke. Okay. Mommy, come. Yes. This is your mother. Yes, this is my mother. This is your mother. Yes. You are her daughter. Yes. And you've been going to the hospital a lot. To look after her. I did, yeah. You I, did? I did, yeah. But okay. I brought her here, so. You brought her here. So she could get healed. So she could get healed. Yes. Okay. Yes. Lift your hand. The reason for going to the hospital is over. Do you believe it? The reason for going a lot of hospital visit is over. Yes. Lift your hands. Yes. It's going. In the name of Jesus. Whatever makes you to go to the hospital a lot. Hey, there's somebody else also going to the hospital a lot. Who is that? Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Somebody who, go, somebody who goes to the hospital a lot. Come to me here. What, what, do you, what are you going to do there? Huh? Your sister is there. What's wrong with her? She has a um, heart disease. Heart disease. And it makes you go there often. Yes, to, visit to visit her. Lift your hand. For the heart disease in the hospital, Jesus, we pray for mercy. She's discharged in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody lift your hands. Lift your hands. Now, whatever you cannot do for yourself, may the Lord do it for you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, may God do it for you. Receive your miracle right now, wherever you are standing, wherever you are sitting. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, may the Lord do for you. And whatever represents a crisis, some kind of a crisis in your life, I command the storm to cease, to abate now. Receive calm in your life and healing. In the name of Jesus. And everyone shouted, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may all be seated. Your pastor. Let's welcome our pastor. Jonathan. How many believe that every crisis is ended by the power of God and in the name of Jesus? Receive it and let me hear your loudest Amen.